day, it's Tony Fortunato from the technology firm. I'm uh, doing a little bit of work for a client. They've asked me to start baselining some of the Android phones to see what kind of network behavior they exhibit. So I uh, thought, okay, let's give it a try and uh, why not document it for everybody else. So here's what I did. Uh, this is the phone that I'm using, a Nexus S, it's uh, Samsung. Um, what I'm going to do is just take the phone turn it on and capture the packets. Now, capturing the packets on Wi-Fi is the trick because with Windows and Wireshark it's kind of hit and miss depending on a few variables. So what I've done is eliminate the variables by using uh, my Air PCAP adapter from Riverbed. So you plug that in your laptop and now it can capture everything on the Wi-Fi network. Everything. And I'm going to show you what that means in a minute. So what I did was I just started my capture uh, with my phone on an access point that specifically was set up for the phone so there's nobody else on it just to make it easy on my brain and I hit start and I captured a bunch of stuff and this is what it looks like so when you actually do capture true Wi-Fi traffic you'll see things like beacon packets, acknowledgments um, you'll see all these weird wonderful things that don't have anything to do with your data so you're probably used to seeing data packets as I call them you know ping and ARP and, and DHCP that kind of thing so um, what I need to do right now is try to get rid of this stuff and, and trust me there are dozens of ways to do this I'm gonna show you the easiest way and what I can do here is just simply do a filter for IP packets only and now all the true Wi-Fi stuff the background management stuff kinda of goes away because it's not IP based so now we've got our DHCP packets DNSC so now all of a sudden I've got a clear view of everything that I wanna look at um, most phones, Androids, in the last few years also have IPv6. So I'm going to type OR IPv6. And now I'll see them both IPv6 and IPv4. Um, just to get rid of IPv6 um, real quick from the equation, I'm going to just do an IPv6 to see if actually anything happens. I know the router that I'm using will not support IPv6. So this is just on the phone. The protocol is enabled, but it's not doing anything. So I can ignore this. right? It's good to know that it is enabled. And of course, if I go through the phone settings, there is not a way to turn this off. So I have to leave it on. I have no choice. So I'm going to back up just IP. So this is IPv4 stuff. And I can see an IP request packet coming from my phone. And then another three milliseconds later, I see another request packet, so obviously there's no response. And then I see the acknowledgement from my router. So there's the router, there's the phone, and they're doing their little DHCP dance. Um, in many cases, I want to just quickly go down here to the actual request to see what they're requesting. So let me just move down a little bit. So I want to know, the phone wants to know, the subnet mask, static route, router, all this basic stuff. Nothing, nothing really out of the ordinary here, which is good to know because if you have a DHCP scope set up for these uh, phones, you're going to want to know what parameters to provide, if there's any special parameters to provide. And here's the acknowledgement that came back from my router. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to collapse all just to make it easier on me. There we go. And if I scroll down, I can see that that information was provided. Okay. Now I see a DNS request and this is coming from the phone and it wants to go to this Android pool ntp.org ntp.org kinda gives it away it's a time server so you can see it's syncing up its time uh, so now it's using NTP version 3 and it's obviously working um, good to note because it's UDP based not TCP based and those are the port numbers or the port number that is being used by the server uh, one two three in this case so if you do have firewalls or filters you want to make sure that gets through so the time gets updated and then the phone goes on and does some other Google stuff uh, that it will do for things like location um, Google talk and all the other types of apps that are loaded on the phone by default now is this really a lot of data well not really this is not a lot of stuff so for example right now if I was to just move this back here you can see there's only 1275 packets in this whole trace. So data wise, not that much. If I want to quantify it a little further, I'll go to my summary report. And you can see here under displayed 116, uh, I can look at the total number of bytes, 81K. So it's a fairly uh, lightweight phone. There's nothing really happening with it. 
Uh, but that's how we start to find out how these phones behave. And I would do the same thing for Apple iPhone, uh, maybe HTC, whatever. As a little sampling to find out if the phones need anything specific on the DHCP side or if they do anything else funky when they finally get on the network. In the next video, I'm, I'm going to uh, take this a step further and start baselining some of the Google apps that are on the phone. So I hope that helps. Have a good day. Bye for now.